so we have an update to Procreate 5 and we have 5X. In this video, I'm going to show you all the new features, give you a sense of what some of them are going to be capable of doing for you. So first of all, before I explain anything in the app, I really would recommend that you update to iOS 14 because some of these features aren't going to be usable without having updated your iPad. So before we even open up the app and start talking about the new features within there, I really recommend that you do something with your widgets. I think it's a really cool feature. So if you press and hold at the top of your widget area here, and it gives you the option of adding a Procreate widget and you can pick your size of widget. Now I'm going to go for the landscape version, add widget, and it instantly adds the image that I've been working on most recently. So whatever it is that you're working on within Procreate, it features an image of that artwork within the widget tile there. And what's really cool is when you click on that, it opens it up straight to the artwork that you have been working on. So another feature that's really cool for Procreate is the way that iOS 14 has updated the way that you can use the Apple Pencil. So one of these ways is when you are in your layer options and perhaps you tap on it and you want to rename, rather than having to use the keyboard, which you can do, you'll notice there's a little option here at the bottom, you can tap on that and you go onto a little window, it gives you the keyboard, which is kind of cool because you don't have to fill the whole bottom area, the little pop out window there. Or another way is to actually do things within the window. Now you can see I can scribble and it deletes. I can even when I do joined up writing, when I do natural handwriting, it actually is able to read that, which is pretty cool. Now, obviously, if you don't feel you've got really neat handwriting and the flow of it isn't readable, then you can spell it out as separate letters. But yeah, I was really impressed by its ability to read my handwriting even. Now it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Click out of it and it saved that as a new title. So another way you can use that obviously is when you are actually adding text like so. Now normally, again, with adding text, you might go to typing it in, but if you don't want to do that and you prefer to scribble something and start again, You can actually handwrite it in there and it actually recognizes it too. There's all sorts of ways that you can manipulate what you've already got. So if you want to undo a space, you can do that. And if you want to redo a space, then you can do that. So it's upwards motion to close a gap and downwards to create a gap. So it doesn't interrupt your workflow as much if you're using the Apple Pencil all the time anyway, and you don't wanna to have to start typing and change the way that you're actually interfacing with the iPad. This could be a really cool new feature. Another really cool feature when you've got your color swatch open here is to press and hold and drag it from your color swatch and it fills straight from there. Previously, you'd have to drag it from the one selector color that you might have already in use. But now you don't need to select the color, you can just drag it from here and it fills it from those colors and it doesn't change the actual predominant color that you're using. Whoops, if I go actually onto that tool, you can see. So another really cool feature is this copy canvas. Now, normally you do three fingers down and you might copy all and then you might have to paste. Whereas here, it's already here. You just copy canvas, paste, and it's already there. So that might be a quick way for you to perhaps onto the wrench settings, copy the canvas, go onto another canvas that you've already created and then paste the whole image into a, a different area to do something different with as well. So another great tool is within the transform option at the top is this extra feature here called snapping. Now, if you tap on it, it gives you the option of selecting magnetics. And what that does is it snaps to the edges. So if you're getting close, it will just snap and actually click on there. Now there's a difference between using it with that selected and with it not selected. So if you're doing this here, it's, it's just difficult to get it absolutely on the edge. You have to be really fiddling around with it to be precise. Whereas you turn the magnetics on and perhaps increase the distance at which it's going to recognize that it's approaching an edge. We'll try that again, double check. So we've got 11 on the distance, we've got the magnetics on and you can see that it, it really snaps to it a little bit better. And you can see it's much easier to actually find the edges now, if I include snapping on that as well, you'll see some extra yellow lines along the edges. And in the center, when it's lined up correctly, you can see a yellow line that actually appears there. And again, it just guides you and it helps it get closer to those actual edges. So you can increase the distance and then it's going to be really blocky and then it really snaps to the places that you're going to want it pretty much. So perhaps you really notice this when you're actually turning it, rotating it. If you change and you put the snapping on and you put the distance on the magnetics, you can really see it snaps, it's more blocky and it really helps you get perhaps increments and angles that it's going to be difficult if it's too smooth. So another thing that you can also do 
if you want to create a private layer, sometimes you've got a reference image that when you are doing a video playback, you don't want the reference image to be constantly seen within your playback video. I'm not going to get into whether that's, you know, something that people should be hiding or not. That's entirely up to individuals. Either way, you can go to the wrench tool or the tool here that looks like a, a spanner in the UK. You can go to insert a photo, swipe to insert a photo here. And then when you go to your layer, you'll see it does actually say it is a private layer. You can equally do the same with a file as well. So moving along to perhaps what is some of the really cool features of this new update are the features within the adjustments and we have some great filters and effects. So we've got a list here of some of the usual things we'd see anyway, so sort of like noise and sharpen, they would normally be there, but we have a few extra ones. So I'm just gonna run through one or two of them. Now I'm gonna pick a layer on this particular painting that I feel would actually benefit from one of these, go back to my adjustments and to bloom. And we have the option of affecting the whole layer or using the Apple Pencil. Now this is something that is applicable to all of the adjustment features. And this is a new feature that includes affecting the entire layer and just singling out areas with the Apple Pencil, which is really great. So we'll go to the bloom first and we'll affect the whole layer. And the bloom effect, if you notice the really white sections there, it's just blowing out and really amping up the exposure of those whiter areas. Now, if you feel that you've had a go at creating a light effect and it isn't quite luminous enough, then this could be a really quick way of creating that glow and that sense of highly saturated and highly e exposed light. Now, I'm quite happy with the, the level of light I managed to get into the piece, but having said that, maybe if you just use it at just a few percent, actually it does just create that little bit more of a kick into the piece of work, use it subtly, and it really could be used to great effect. Easy to ever do it though, so perhaps not that far. You can also change the size, and it's gonna completely blow out after a point, and it will lose that kind of focus. You can have affected the burn, and the transition there as well. So play around with the levels, even within that effect. Another really cool effect is glitch. And again, you can use either the layer, which I'm gonna do again, and you should be able to see some noise appearing into the scene there. And I'll just zoom in so you can see it a bit better. So you've got artifacts, which just creates slight pieces and sort of debris within the scene. You can also go onto wave, and if I zoom back out, you'll see that better. And you can see how it's affecting certain things. In fact, we'll pick a better layer for that again. So we'll go back to our layers, perhaps go to something that has the majority of the image there anyway. So we're gonna go onto that layer again, that had that light, go back, pick the glitch again, go for the layer, and you can see it's just affecting the light bits there again. You can go on wave and you can affect it like that, signal, and diverge. So depending on what kind of effect you're really looking for, these are potentially really great tools. So I can also try the tools here on a black and white drawing. So it doesn't have to be a color piece. So if I go to my glitch tool, for example, we'll try it with a pencil this time and we'll start with the artifact and I just select an area and you can see that it has created noise and artifacts in that particular area. Now, once you've done that, you still have the ability to change the degree to which that actually happens. So you can turn it down so it's not as many and you can turn it up so there is more Put it somewhere in the middle and then again you have the option to change the size of the blocks and which is zoomed in which is i suppose similar to the size of the blocks and also again a slider for the amount within that you also have wave again you can turn that up and down you have signal again you can turn that up and down i've only got a se section selected here so and you've got a divergent and you can also slide that up and down. If you want to stick on this particular drawing and try out something else here, we also have skipping one, we'll come back to that, we've got chromatic aberration. So if I do the whole layer and I slide it along, you can start to see that it separates, separates the colours that are actually forming the composition. So you can see we've got the red, green and blue all starting to be separated out and you can change where you want the perspective to be. Try the displace instead and you can actually manually put them wherever you want. Again, go back to the perspective. You can change the transition. Not entirely clear what that's supposed to be doing really, but, and you can also change the fall off. So you can see if the fall off is on maximum, it really drops off here and it's only on the outer edge, or you can have it on zero, in which case it really comes in close to this center point wherever you put it. 
So if you put it on this edge, it's going to take you all the way up to that. But if you increase the fall off, it's pushing it further and further away. So moving along to the next filter or adjustment tool here that's an additional item. We've got the half tone. So if you click on that, we'll do the whole layer this time. Stick on the full color, although it isn't color. And you can start to see some of the effects that you'll actually get. It has actually got some color in there, even though it's a black and white drawing. We'll try the screen print again. Similar, so you slide it up and down and you get a varying degree of dots, just like it were a screen print or a newspaper article. And you can do the same with a newspaper, obviously, as well. So we'll try the same thing on a color image. So we have one of my landscape paintings. So if we try the same thing, if we go to adjustments, half tone, again, stick to the whole layer, make sure we're on a, a layer that has enough information. In fact, what we'll do is we'll use the tool that I showed you before, copy canvas, and paste it. So now we have the whole canvas here. We'll put it at the top, back to the adjustments, try the half tone, the whole layer, and we should be able to show that a little bit more clear than we could on a black and white drawing. So we can use that, we can use the screen print to a greater or lesser extent. It's really a bit over the top, obviously, like that. So do it as a subtle effect further down here, and perhaps that looks the way you want it to. Oh, we've got a newspaper as well, like so. So another thing you can do using the adjustment is control the gradient map aspect. So um, I'm going to have a go at doing that using the whole layer, but I'm going to, again, flatten the whole image. And I just realized on the previous time I showed you if what I didn't do was paste it straight from here. So what you can actually do is copy canvas and then paste it straight from there, much easier. So make sure that that layer is on the top. We'll go back to the settings here. I can now scroll through the different gradients and it's gonna put a variety of different color schemes into my scene. Now, some of them are gonna appear pretty straightforward to begin with, but if you tap on them, you actually have the ability to control how much of each element you actually want to inject in there. So you can really come up with something that's a really powerful, interesting, vibrant image just by playing around with the levels within that. You can even rename it here to create your own. Try something like this. Again, tap on it, move the sliders around, and maybe you can come up with something that you think is a better version. An alternative to that is to use the pencil and actually apply smaller amounts of it. So if we go back to it on the gradient map, use the pencil, select a brush type. So we'll stick with a soft brush and change the size of the brush. You can use any kind of brush. I just am a fan of the soft brush and you can select an area to apply this filter to. And of course you can go along, you can change which particular one you're actually using. If you do this carefully, it could be a really cool effect. Tap on the screen, it gives you some options so you can either apply it, you can preview it with and without, you can undo and you can reset or you can cancel. So I'm going to cancel that, but there's some really cool effects that you can make with it. Another cool thing that you can do once you're within your selection tool is that you can draw some different shapes freehand. So I'll just create some blobs. And you now have the option of color fill and whatever color you happen to have selected there, it's going to fill them rather than you having to drag and drop them from the corner each time. Another way of doing that is again, go to select the selection tool, go to the color fill option, finish a shape and it's now filling it in again with the color selected at the top. Another really cool thing you can do within your canvas is you can add a reference. Now, automatically when you click on that, it creates a little reference of your canvas and maybe that's going to be useful for actually moving around. Put it in a corner. You can actually refer to that when you're doing the whole thing. So if you do any detail here, for example, you can see the bright green. It is actually a live reference of the whole image. So you can really see the impact that it's having on the whole thing. Now that's really useful. It saves a lot of zooming in and out. That's something that I can definitely see myself making a lot of use out of. Another option, if you click on it, is that you can insert an image. So you go import image. It'll take you to your photos. You can put another image in there and you can see you've got a reference to actually look at. So another great thing you can do, depending on what you want to use the application for, is that you can apply the painting to your face. So you actually get a live version of your own face on camera and you can apply whatever you're working on this canvas to your face. It also means that you can paint straight onto the image and it will appear onto your face as well. I guess if you're doing stage makeup designs and this could be a really cool feature. Within that, you have various different things here that line up to your eyes. 
I mean, you can't see it very clearly that, but you can see it's recognized where my eye is, therefore it's applying it around the eye. It knows where my mouth is. So again, it's playing around there and it knows where the end of my nose is. So it really applies it in real time and yeah, could be really cool. Just a couple more things you can do with your actual reference. You can zoom it in whenever you want. You can actually use it to press and hold and select colors too. Again, it could be really useful to have your reference image there. There's loads of times where I just need to have an image. It saves you having to select something from the bottom here, which can be quite awkward to create another window. Really, you want the full app open and to have a reference image there can be really, really cool. So within this face painting, tool you also have options up here so if you click on those you have the option to take a photo record a video you can turn off the camera so it actually doesn't show you the background and it just shows you the image projected onto your face and you also have the option of going full screen like this so not quite sure what the application for this would be i suppose if you were doing a face painting design you could see it from all sorts of different angles and it could be kind of cool and if you close down the reference image, it's going to disappear. But whenever you need it back again, you can just put the reference image back up and it remembers what you were using last time within this particular canvas. Another really new cool feature is uh, actually creating color swatches. So once you go to your palettes and you click plus, you can create a new palette in lots of different ways now. So you can take them from your camera. So if you click on here, based on what it can see now, it can't see very much in this particular environment. Now I can't personally see myself doing it that way, but I can certainly see myself creating it from a photo. So if I put a photograph in there, you'll see that it's just created one at the top. It was a little bit difficult to see that because it put it right at the top. So I'll do it again. I'll create one from a photo. I'll go to one of my digital paintings. I'll click on that and you can see it actually used the painting there to create a full palette of colors from it. Could be a really great effect. Another great thing you can do with quick menus is you can create different templates of quick menus depending on what you're doing. So for example, if you wanted one for sketching, you might want an entirely different set of actions to be quickly available. So you can pick your actions, press and hold, select smudge, undo. Again, depends on what you're wanting to actually do on your quick selection template. Create another one, you can call this one painting. Like I say, you can toggle between them and they will give you a different selection of quick menu options. Another thing you can do once you've selected a few shapes for your colour fill, and bear in mind you can also use rectangles or ellipses. You don't have to draw them freehand. Clearly it's not easy to do that completely freehand, so use the tools. You can then go on to other things like feather and you can blur them out to a certain extent. Within this, you can also go on remove and you can create shapes. It will actually remove parts of them as well. Okay, I hope that's been useful and you found some information about the latest updates to uh, Procreate useful. Please make sure to check out my other videos, my playlist, and most importantly, subscribe and like the videos that you like. Hope to see you back here soon. See you later.